The New York Knicks are an absolute nightmare for any team that might face them in this year's postseason, and they're a team that I think is getting overlooked by a ton of NBA fans, especially with Julius Randle out, and then their seedings getting established yesterday because they're going to have to face the Philadelphia 76ers or Miami Heat in the first round, and without Julius Randle, some fans are saying, hey, can the Knicks really make it? Maybe they should be focused on next year. It is what it is, but no. The Knicks, as is, without Randall in the lineup, are a team that no NBA team, whether it's the Sixers with a former MVP, whether it's the Miami Heat that be making the finals on these lower seed playoff runs year after year. The New York Knicks are a team that no one should want to face in the NBA playoffs for a couple of reasons. So we're going to dive into those in this video. But before we do, again, over 97% of our viewers are not subscribed to the channel. And we want to keep you up to date with all of the latest NBA news. So make sure you keep it locked courtside die just because the play-ins around the court of the playoffs, things are about to get wild in the NBA. But what's going on with the New York Knicks? Because they're a team since they acquired, since they made that mid-season trade of crying OG and Anobi, this team's been on another level and they've been doing it while dealing with a ton of adversity, a ton of turmoil in regards to players being in, out of the lineup, lots of injuries piling up for this squad, including one of their top guys in Julius Randle. But still, even with OG and Anobi being injured a little bit, this team has been on another level. With him in the lineup, with him playing in these games, the New York Knicks have a 20-3 and record. Since they've acquired OG and Anobi in the 23 games that he's actually played, they've only lost three of them. And that's pretty absurd. That's pretty crazy. And why is this happening? Because, frankly, looking at the box score, looking at his averages in the season, they went down from when he was with the Toronto Raptors. I mean, only averaging 14 points per game, four rebounds. How is this guy having such an impact on this New York Knicks team? I mean, what could really be going on? Well, as a Toronto Raptors fan, as a guy that has been pushing, promoting the DPOY candidate, you know, banner for OG and Anobi for years, for season after season, I know what's going on with OG. This man is an impact defender, and the Knicks are a very well-constructed roster to be effective on the defensive end. They have a talent, they have a group that is built as a unit under Tom Thibodeau's system that is going to really clamp up teams, especially when OG's and Anobi's out there on the court. But him as your point of attack defender that can guard whether you're the opposing team is a point guard. Their best player is a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward. OG Ananobi is capable of guarding them. Heck, we've seen OG Ananobi guard the Joel Embiid's of the world in the playoffs. So that's something to look forward to, you know, ahead of this year's uh, postseason if we do get a Knicks uh, Sixers matchup. But basically, OG can literally guard any player on the court and he can do it effectively because he's mobile, but he's also big, not just in height. But this man is strong, one of the strongest wing defenders in the entire NBA and defensively just adds an element that forget all the schemes, forget having all these complimentary pieces. You have a superstar defender in OG Ananobi and he still brings it to you on the offensive end. He's still able to knock down close to 40% of his threes. You know, he's a proper three and D guy, but does defense so elite. He should be regarded as a star level defender. He's one of those players that deserves that recognition. I think him being reintegrated into the lineup now to close out this season, that's going to be huge for the New York Knicks as they enter this sort of, you know, probably a tough first round matchup, whether it's with the Philadelphia 76ers or Miami Heat. But another storyline regarding the New York Knicks that shouldn't be uh, overlooked because again, their defense with OG has been crazy. I also want to bring up a stat. Basically, they have a 107 defensive rating when OG and Anobi's playing for this New York Knicks team. And to put that in context, the best defensive rating in terms of a team this season is the Minnesota Timberwolves so that, that are currently a 109. So they have the best, you know, advanced stats in terms of defense when OG and Anobi's playing for that squad. So regardless if you have an MVP, if you have a playoff, Jimmy, you are not going to get any easy buckets against the Knicks. But they're probably going to have a guy that can get some easy buckets against you because Jalen Brunson... I know when he was traded to them, they're like, oh, is he overpaid? The Mavericks thought so because he got that big contract. But frankly, that that is a bargain. The contract that he was signed for with the New York Knicks because this man has been dumb good this season. Is playing at an all-NBA level without a doubt. Only 27 years old, averaging 29 points per game, four rebounds, seven assists, shooting 40% from behind the three-point line. And again, it's doing it on the two seed in the Eastern Conference despite all of the injuries, the trades that have gone down. I mean... The stat increases, the jumps, the level uh, Jalen Brunson has been able to develop into has just been on a unheard of sort of trajectory. Maybe not unheard of, but he is taking his steps forward. And look, 
Jalen Brunson is a guy that watching him play, he's able to create his own shot, whether it's behind the three-point line. He's not just a guy that relies on three-point shooting to get his buckets. He uses his size, he uses his strength to get into the paint and finish at the rim as well. But the three-point shooting is something you have to look at in terms of a guy that's being able to create your own shot. Because playoff time, we see it so many years, right? Oh, a guard, the John Walls of the world. Not Damian Lillard, but, you know, those guards that enter the playoffs, and sure, they have good runs, but can they compete with teams that have, you know, a big man, an elite small forward as their sort of 1A? Can they compete? Because can the guard get some easy buckets, get some easy shots when the defense tightens, when things close in? But Jalen Brunson is a different level of guard. He's a different sort of uh, PG putting up these big type of stats because if you look at the shooting, right, if you look at the shooting splits, the man, again, the corner stuff, shoots over 46% from the corners. That's over in the past, shot over 50% from corner threes. But he creates, he's shooting 40% behind the three-point line on pretty well all shots that are created by himself. I mean, only 58% of his three-point attempts are assist upon. That's ridiculously low for someone making 40% 40, 40 of their three-point shots. That means when the postseason comes and those open looks kind of go away, Jalen Brunson's already practiced. He's already sort of in his back with making those types of shots. So I don't project those numbers going down. And then even in the paint, right, Jalen Brunson's making, you know, all basically in terms of his stats, what's going on here, only 23% of his twos are assist upon. So, I mean, Jalen Brunson's able to create his own shot with the defensive focus completely locked in on him with the New York Knicks this entire season. I project his numbers to actually go up come this year's postseason. And then around the edges, around the line, speaking of the defense, speaking of everything that's going on with this team, the New York Knicks just have an extremely well-constructed roster. Now, don't mind the players that are still in there from previous trades, but obviously Julius Randle's out, but Dante DiVincenzo is really taking this game to the next level for this uh, Knicks team. Bounce around a little bit with the Kings, the Warriors, obviously on the Bucks previously, but has found his footing defensively and offensively for this Knicks squad. Josh Hart, obviously, you know, can space the floor, can play elite defense, gets a ton of boards. They have Alec Burks and Bo uh, Bogdanovich, who they traded for at the trade deadline, haven't had that necessarily, you know, crazy, crazy impact for the jump, but as the season's gone along, they found their sort of footing. And, uh, you know, some sneaky pickups. I don't think the casual viewers, the Knicks, really have been seeing. But Deuce McBride, Miles McBride, has just really come into his own. After Emmanuel quickly was traded, he was really given the reins. You had to fight with Evil Dante, Malachi Flynn, who did have a 50-piece for the Detroit Pistons there for maybe a game or two. But Miles McBride has really been the guy that off the bench has had some monster performances for the Knicks, proving he's a legitimate backup for this New York Knicks team when he's out there in this game. And, you know, off the bench in the big section because obviously Isaiah Hardenstein has been a guy that's really stepped up. Overall, his stats just aren't crazy, but his impact has really felt out there on the court. But questions about Mitchell Robinson's health and then whether or not Precious Achua can really have any impact on a winning team. Those are some questions that the New York Knicks had. And defensively, this is going to have a serious impact and, you know, their potential face off against the Philadelphia 76ers and one of these squads. Frankly, Mitchell Robinson's back in the lineup, coming off the bench, not doing anything crazy. He had a big game against the Brooklyn Nets recently, but we know what Mitchell Robinson's going to do. Block some shots, play defense, probably not a lot of minutes just because he's recovering from injury, but Precious Achua has been a steal for the New York Knicks. Now, I personally, as a Raptors fan, think the, the Toronto Raptors got a haul in RJ Barrett, Manuel quickly. Only two guys really have been playing well for the Raptors to close out their season. I still think that's a W trade for the Raptors. But giving up Precious Achua, at the point that they did, because he has shown flashes of potential. He has shown moments of greatness over the course of his NBA career. Had a horrific start to this year's season. A trade from the Toronto Raptors, almost as a throw-in in this deal, this OG Ananobi trade. But frankly, the New York Knicks got a good one. He is extremely switchable as a big man. Only about 6'9 at the center position, but similar reign to OG Ananobi is strong, is mobile, can block shots. Heck, he can even space the floor a little bit, dare I say it, not consistently, but he can shoot the three as well. But he's super athletic. Yes, you're going to get some boneheaded plays from Precious Achua at times, but he is a guy that can get thrown in there, be an elite defender, can get you some buckets, and just be a sort of, you know, game-changing presence. You know, obviously you think guys coming off the bench that are in microwaves, you know, have impact in terms of scoring or whatever, as those guards, Jamal Crawford's of the world, Lou Williams, and those types of guys. Precious Achua does in a little bit different way. Now, when he's struggling, when it's bad, it's bad. But when it's good, he's a serious impact offensive player off the bench as well. So the Knicks, they have a well-rounded team defensively, offensively. They have their 1A star. They have their 1A star on the defensive end as well. And frankly, 
I don't think there's a single team that should be uh, looking to face off against the New York Knicks in the first round, but in any round, really, in this year's postseason. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You guys are the best to make this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.